In the first module of the course, uh, we learned how to read data from flat or delimited files. Now in the second module, we'll learn how to read data from Excel spreadsheets and other statistical softwares such as SAS, SPSS and Stata. Now uh, we are going to use two packages here, R packages. One is Read Excel, which we'll use for reading data from Excel spreadsheets. And the second one is Haven, which we'll use for reading data from files of other statistical softwares. Right, so here is the website of Read Excel. It is readexcel.tidyverse.org. I have added this link in the learning management system. So you can come over and take a look at the documentation. And uh, I'll also show you the website of Haven uh, when we come to the section of reading uh, data from other statistical softwares. Now, specifically with uh, Read Excel, this is what we'll do. We'll learn how to list sheets in an Excel workbook. Right? So an Excel workbook can contain multiple sheets. So we, we need to know how many sheets are there and from which sheet we are trying to read the data. So the first thing is to list all the sheets in an Excel file. And then we'll read data from Excel sheet. Right? So this can be an Excel workbook with the extension .xls or .xlsx. Right? So there's one function which will handle both the file types. We'll also learn how to read specific cells. That is, we'll learn to read data from a range of cells. Uh, this is uh, in case you don't want to read all the data that is present in the uh, particular sheet. We'll also learn to read data from specific rows and specific columns, right? So let us get started. The first thing that we'll do is we'll list all the sheets in an Excel workbook. Now, before you get started, I want you to download this particular file, which is sample.xls uh, from the learning management system or from our GitHub repository, right? And you can store it in the same folder as your RStudio project or create a new subfolder called data and you can save it here, right? So the file is sample.xls. Here is the file. Just has some very basic data. This is from... Uh, you know, uh, dummy data from Google Analytics, right? And we'll use this particular file to uh, explore how to read data from an Excel spreadsheet, okay? So the first thing is to list the sheets in an Excel workbook, and you can do that using Excel underscore sheets, right? So let us try this out. First, you install the read Excel package. You can do that using install.packages. Right. Once you install this, you can load it into the current session using the library function. Right. So now we'll list sheets. Now we'll list all the sheets in the file. Right. So using Excel underscore sheets and then you specify the location and name of the file. So the file is in the data subfolder. So I'll first specify the name of the folder followed by the name of the file and the extension. Right, so there are three sheets, right? Sheet one, sheet two, and the third sheet is called ecom, right? So we can verify this, right? So there's three sheets, sheet one, sheet two, and ecom. Now the data that we want to read is in the ecom sheet right so we'll when we read the data we'll have to specify the name of the sheet so now let us see how we can read data from an excel spreadsheet so the function is read underscore excel right so you first use the function read underscore excel followed by the location and the name of the file and then you have to specify the sheet from which the data has to be read now this can be done in two ways. One way is to specify the name of the sheet or the position of the sheet, right? So in our case, the sheet has a name which is ecom and it is the third sheet in the file. So we'll try both the ways to read data from this particular sheet. Read data from sheet. So we'll use Excel, sorry. We'll use read underscore Excel data slash sample.xls 
and then I'm going to specify sheet is equal to ecom. Right, so when you're specifying the name of the sheet, ensure that it is enclosed in single or double quotes because it is a text. Right, so let us run this. Right, so here you can see the data. Right, the seven rows, five columns. Right, and you can see all the rows and columns here. Right, so now let us see the other way to read the same data, but this time we'll specify the sheet number. It's third sheet. So let us see if we get the same data here. Right, so you can see the same data here, seven rows, five columns, and all the data is displayed here. Right. So whenever you're reading the data from a sheet, either you can use the name of the sheet, if uh, it has been assigned a name, or you can use the number of the sheet or the, so that is the number or position of the sheet in the Excel workbook, right? So now we know how to read data from an Excel spreadsheet. Now the next thing that we need to do is, you may not always want to read all the data that is present in a sheet, right? So you might just want to read data from a particular range of cells, right? So let us say in this case, we just want to read data in this range of cell, right? So let me just mark it. Right, so we want to read data from cell B1 to cell C4. That is two columns and four rows, including the uh, column name. Right, so we'll try this now, how to read this data. So I'll go back to our studio. Read data from specific cells. Right, so I'm going to use the same function again, read underscore Excel the same Excel workbook sample.xls right we also have to specify the sheet so third sheet and now I will specify the range of the cells using the range argument and I'm going to specify the range here as B1 up to C4 right so I said read all the data from cell B1 up to cell c4 so you can see the same data set here right users and new users and the first row data is 43296 4238 and here it is 10983 and 7636 right so this is one method now there are other methods as well but this is one method where you can specify the range of the cells using the range argument and within single or double quotes, you specify the range of the cells as well. So in this case, it was B1 to C4. Now there is another technique, right? So here, what we'll do is, we'll first specify, sorry, so this data slash sample.xls, range sheet is equal to three. And now I'll specify the range, but I will use a different technique, right? So here, we have cell B1 to C4, okay? So we are, what we are doing is we are starting from cell B1 and then we are covering four rows, including uh, the first row and we are covering two columns, right? So you start from cell B1 and you come down four rows, including the first cell and you cover two columns, including the B column, right? So this can be expressed as use a function called anchor, right? Start from cell B1, right? And I'm going to give the dimension, right? I'm going to give the dimension of the range of the cell that needs to be covered, right? So that is four rows and two columns, right? So if you start from B1, including the first cell, it is four rows, right? And two columns, that is column B and column C. And that is what we have specified here as well, right? Start with the B1 cell and cover four rows and two columns, including first cell and the B column. So just for comparison, I'm going to run this code as well so that you can see the output there and compare the output with this part of the code, right? So you can see the same data here, right? So we have two columns and four rows, including the column name. And the same output is here as well, right? Two columns and four rows. 
The only difference was in the method in which we specified it, right? So we first specified the cell from which it has to start, including the uh, column name and the row number. And then we gave it the number of rows and columns it has to cover, right? Now there's a third method, okay? So in this method, what we are going to do is, we are going to say the row number and the column number to begin with and the row number and the column number to end with. So if you take this area here, B1 is the top left and C4 is the bottom right, right? So B1 can be described as row 1, column 2, right? So this row 1 and column 2 and the bottom right which is C4 can be described as row 4, column 3, right? So you start from row 1, column 2 and then you cover all the cells up to row 4, column 3, right? So that will cover the range of cells from which we need to read the data. So let us see how we can specify this. Again, use read underscore Excel and then specify the location of the file, the sheet number. And now I'll specify the range, but I'm going to use a function called cell underscore limits right and here i am going to give it two locations which is the top left and the bottom right of the range of cells that i want to read so the top left is row 1 column 2 right so i'll specify it as row 1 column 2 okay and the bottom left is row 4 column 3 right so that would be row 4 column 3 Right, all of this is going inside the cell limits function, right? So I've given it two inputs. The first input is the location of the top left of the range of cells that I want to read, which was column row one and column two. And the second input is the bottom right of the range of cells that I want to read, which was column four and, sorry, it was uh, row four and column three, right? So let us run this. And again, you can see the same data that we have read, right? Two columns and four rows. Now let us run all the three so that you get a good perspective. Right? So we have read the same range of cells, but we have used three different methods. So as you practice, you will be able to figure this out. It is not very complicated. You will still be making some errors or you'll be getting some warnings. That is not an issue. You can always uh, reach out to us and we'll be able to help you. But you can use all these different methods. So whenever you're trying to read a particular range of cells, figure out which method is appropriate and then you can use that particular method, right? So the next thing that we want to do is we want to see how we can read specific columns or specific rows, right? right? So, so far we have focused on, <coughs> okay, right, okay. So far we have focused on reading data from a range of cells. Now let us turn our attention to reading data from particular columns or rows, right? So let us start with read data from particular columns. And so we are going to use the same function, read underscore Excel, sample dot XLS. We want to read data from the third sheet and now we'll specify the range using the cell underscore calls function right since we want, we want to read the second and third column we'll mention it like this right, so let me run this code right so you can see that it has read all the rows of the second and third column right b and c users and new users all the rows have been read so whenever you want to read data of all the rows but of particular columns then use the cell underscore calls function and within that you specify the columns from which the data has to be read similarly we can read data for particular rows Right. Let us say we want to read data from row 1 to row 5, right? That is the first 5 rows including the column name. 
so we'll use read underscore excel sheet is equal to 3 and now in range I will use a function called cell underscore rows right and within this I'm going to specify the first five rows right row 1 to row 5 right so you can see the first row four rows of data and the column name right so we now know how to read data from excel spreadsheet and we also know how to read data from a particular range of cells or particular columns and rows right and some of the things that we covered in the previous module with respect to flat or delimited files uh, like whether how to handle column names how to skip rows and how to specify the maximum number of uh, rows that need to be read and how to specify the uh, data type for each column are applicable here as well right so here if you go to the uh, reference section in the website right you can see that read underscore excel has all those um, arguments as well right call underscore names is set to true so it will by default assume that the column names are present uh, call underscore types again you can use this for uh, specifying the data types of the column uh, you can skip a certain number of rows you can specify the maximum number of uh, rows that must be read right so all these options are here now what I want you to do is I want you to uh, go to the LMS and we have put a bunch of uh, practice questions for you there right so where you'll have to read different range of uh, cells and different uh, rows and columns and while you're uh, doing that you'll have to use some of these right so we have we have put a separate uh, Excel spreadsheet there you can use that for practice and you'll have to use some of these arguments when you're when you're working with that particular Excel spreadsheet and using the practice question now that we have uh, looked at all the functions that can be used for reading data from an Excel spreadsheet uh, let us also look at another way of reading this data set right so if you're using R studio then click on file and come down to import data set and here click on from Excel right so here you can select the file so go to data and sample.xls right so the sheet um, says default so, yeah so now let us select the sheet which is econ okay and here you can also specify the range right like how we did in the previous example let us say b1 is to c4 right and we'll say the first row is the column name so let it be like that and now let us click on import right so you can see the data that has been imported right users and then the first three rows of data two columns and four rows right so you can use um, the user interface as well and for that you just have to go here file import data set and from excel right so you can use the um, user interface as well try both the methods uh, write some code and when you want you can also use the rstudio um, user interface